Are house prices in the UK overpriced? A declining house market would suggest that is the case. If we look at this chart here, Halifax and Nationwide are two of the biggest mortgage lenders in the UK, so the data is pretty accurate and up to date, unlike land registries. Now, Nationwide is showing that there's been a 3.8% decline in the year on year house price, and Halifax is showing a 2.6%. But a big question on everybody's lips is how much will this decline and are houses overvalued? We're gonna cover this in this video. At the end, I'm gonna tell you what my opinion on is on the house market and also what we're doing in this market as property investors. But let's have a look at this article here. It says the average UK house price was £2,257,880 and, and eight pounds, sorry, in September 2023. Nearly 14,500 lower than this time last year. And I'm going to leave this with you, the average house price. We'll come back to this later on. But again, if you look at this next article here, it says the UK house prices dropped 5.3%. And we've in, in every region across the UK, according to Nationwide. So depending where you get your information will depend different prices. So one article come from the BBC, Nationwide said this. Another one come from The Guardian said, said another thing. So make sure you triangulate the information. But if you look at lots of different articles, lots of different data, then you can get a sort of gauge of where this is going. But all the data is showing house prices, especially average house prices, are in decline. So why is this happening? The big thing is, look, this article here, high interest rates blamed for the year-on-year -year fall with the prices of the average home falling 14.5K in September. So interest rates are going up. So if you've had your head under a rock, you might not know what's going on, but let me get you up to speed of what has been going on. Obviously, we've had high inflation and with high inflation, the Bank of England has been pushing up the base rate to fight high inflation. And as a result, mortgages are doubling, quadrupling. The average mortgage a while ago was around two three percent now it's around five six percent so it doesn't take a genius to figure out that it's going to put a pressure on people's affordability on people's lifestyles and this is one of the biggest impacts on the cost of living but big question to you put in the comments what do you see this as do you see this as an opportunity or do you see this as a challenging time have a watch of this dave ramsey video and see what he has to say about where the market's at right now is a the best time to buy a house in the next five years okay Prices are not going to go down. Some of you are saying, well, I'm going to wait for prices to come yeah. down. They're going to go up slower, but they're not going to go down. And so five years from today, houses are going to be more expensive. This is as cheap as it's going to be five years, in the next five years. So this is the best price right now if you're going to buy a house. Well, interest rates are up. Buy the house. If interest rates come back down, refinance. Don't not buy waiting on interest rates to come down. Just refinance the mortgage if interest rates come down. This is the best time to buy a house in the next five years. So love to know your full views. Do you agree with Dave Ramsey? Do you not agree with Dave Ramsey? As I said at the end, I'm going to share with you where my thoughts are, where the market's at, and what we actually do as property investors in this market now and as property deal sources. But who am I to justify this? I'm Harvey, remote property investor, and for in my first five years of investing, I've done five deals. In two year period, I've done nearly 50 deals because I started deal sourcing, doing BRR, educate myself, and social media. If you're interested in seeing more about that, make sure you watch this video here. It's the fastest way you can get a 10K month even into today's market. But let's get back to the point of our house prices overvalued. This is from another article as well, and this is just true. Summer is traditionally a slow season for the housing market, but August uh, marked the largest drop in asking prices than what we usually have from previous years. So is this an indication that interest rates are really catching up and pushing it down? And again, I'm going to get back to what I said earlier on, circle back on this. So average house prices is being hit. So this is a very much a macro and microeconomic situation. So on the macro, the average price is being hit. But when you go on to the micro levels, it tells a very different story. And every city will have macro and microeconomics going on within that city. So if you look at any city, whether that's London, Birmingham, Manchester, Newcastle, Stockton on Tees, my city, there's going to be little pockets where you've got high end areas. Like think of it like the Monopoly map. You've got your old Kent Road and you've got your Mayfair and you've got the areas in between. So every single style area will be affected differently. So this is just a generalization. This is just an average. So when we look at the macro and micro, as well when you go to regions again each region will have macro and micros within that but look at this chart here it says look the areas got hit the artist south wales quite surprises me because of the lower price but it had a big growth so sometimes the the faster the climb the the, the harder the fall but behind there is east anglia east midlands um, you can see at the bottom 
Northern Ireland and the North, these are house prices where price per earnings ratio is in line. And what I mean by this, what is the average salary in comparison to the average price? So in my area, for example, where I invest, not where I live, I invest 250 miles from where I live uh, remotely, but in my Northeast area where I invest, what we're seeing the trend at the moment is the prices in, in, in the macro part of my price barrier. So I don't buy at the bottom end. I don't buy in Old Kent Roads, which is like your 40, 50K properties in my area. I don't buy even in the middle end, which is your 150 properties. I don't buy in the higher end, which is like your four, 500K properties. I buy at about 70K. That is my sweet spot. You get long-term tenants with them, them style houses. You get good stability. You get better style tenants. So what we experience with them style properties in my area is they're not selling quite as quick, but the price is kind of maintaining. We're getting the odd deal through because motivated sellers shift so the motivation of a seller in most cases is not when they first put a property to market it's more when it's been sat on the market for a while the fact that properties are sitting on the market for a bit longer means we're getting more deals done but the prices are staying pretty sturdy in that macro price barrier, about sort of 70 to 90K. If you look at the price per earnings ratio, so in my area, Stockton on Tees and Middlesbrough, the average salary is around 31,000 pound. The average house price is around 145K. So you can see this is in line with earnings. And again, when you look at the price jump, of mortgages are going up, the average mortgage is around 100K, and when they're going from like 3% mortgages to 6% mortgages, that's about 200 pound jump. When you look at the jump with sort of in London, when they're going from like 400K mortgages, they're jumping up about 900 pound. And if you look at the price per earnings ratio in London, the average salary is around 37,000 pound, and the average house price is over 500K. So it doesn't take an economic sort of mathematician or broker or an accountant to tell you these are the people getting pressured more this is why properties in the south and properties above the average house price is the ones that are declining and get feeling the pressure the hardest if we look on this chart here like this will paint a little bit more of a picture as well so look this is the average price per earnings ratio if you can see in london it is over like it's around 11 percent this never it's not been this high for over 150 years and last time it was this high the price per earnings ratio we had a 50 year decline you look at the average of the UK, it's around 7%, but if you look at the other regions, they're just lower. So this is what gives you stability in other areas. This is why I don't invest locally. Number one, the numbers don't stack locally, but number two, I believe there's much more stable stability, especially since these areas have got jobs coming into there, like since the powerhouse of the North, the leveling up agenda, there's more infrastructure and jobs in the area. So everybody always says to me, what about 08? These areas crashed. It's because in 08, the banks was throwing money out the door irresponsibly. They was lending to anybody. They wasn't stress testing them. They wasn't seeing that affordability. And inevitably, the market crashed because people couldn't afford to pay back their loans. The banks are stress testing people really well and there's loads more employment coming into the area. At the moment, we're seeing the biggest wealth transfer in property we're ever seen. So have a watch of this video if you wanna see that in depth. I'll show you the stats and the details of how this wealth transfer is happening in the history of the UK. So you're just not making gut fit decisions, you can make informed decisions. But this is why we're still buying in the Northeast. We're sourcing deals for investors. There's still an appetite. Yes, the mortgages are gone up but so have the rents because there's been more landlords exit the market than there has been entering the market putting and there's more landlords turning their, their single lets into SAs which avoids them from the section 24 which is putting a pressure on normal house prices so typical rents that I was getting for 500 pound a month we're now seeing like 650, 700 pound a month. And so the rates have gone up, my mortgages have gone up by about 150, but the rents have gone up by maybe 200 pounds. So they're evening themselves out. So yes, we are still buying in these macro climates. I wouldn't buy in the whole of Teesside because there's some areas that are getting affected much more, but in these macro spots, dig these out and you will start still getting results. Watch this video to find your macro areas and how you actually find your gold mine area. And if you're still here, thank you so much. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon, really helps the channel. My why is to live on my terms, my mission is to help as many people live on their terms using education as a vehicle to do that. So please share this if you think someone will get, be value, find this valuable. Love to hear your thoughts in the comments. And remember, if you don't evolve your ideas, you never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms and have an amazing day.